In this video, I'll be looking at the character Shadow from Final Fantasy 3 or 6, depending on which version you've played. All the information in this video comes from the gameplay of the original Super Nintendo release of Final Fantasy 3, so all the names and locations will be based on that translation. Additional information comes from the instruction manual and maps included with this release, the Final Fantasy 3 official strategy guide, written by Squaresoft and published by Nintendo, and the Final Fantasy Ultimania Archives Volume 1, written by Square Enix and published by Dark Horse Comics. Of all the heroes in the fight to liberate the world from Kefka and the, and the Gastelian Empire, no one is more aloof and morally ambiguous as Shadow. Very little is known of him, including his real name. Throughout the world, he is an infamous assassin and mercenary for hire. It is said that he would take on any job, even killing his own mother for the right price. He dresses in what appears to be an all black and red ninja outfit based on his in-game sprite. But looking at the original Japanese concept artwork, his outfit is quite colorful and ornate with blues and silvers. With him always is his faithful Doberman, Interceptor. His dog is not only a formidable attack dog in battle, but adds to Shadow's ability to intimidate those around him. Shadow's origins are unknown to all but himself even his age is unknown. Based on his physique and physical prowess, he is assumed to be under 30 years old. His height is estimated to be about 5 foot 10 inches and weight to be approximately 140 to 150 pounds. The Ultimania archives indicate that a treasured item in his possession is a pocket watch with a portrait inside. Again, whose portrait would be known only to him and he is not very forthright with giving out that information. The Ultimania archives also indicate that he likes hard-boiled eggs, though this is never mentioned in the game itself, and his dislikes are dreams, which we'll find out more about later. The first encounter with Shadow occurs while King Edgar Figaro and Locke Cole, members of the Returner's Resistance Group, are bringing Terra to Mount Cole to meet with their leader, Bannon. This encounter happens in the cafe in South Figaro. Shadow ignores the party, except to threaten to feed them to his dog, Interceptor, if they're not careful and keep their distance. This offends Locke greatly, but Shadow maintains his cool and doesn't start a fight with them. It's obvious from the atmosphere in the cafe that all the other patrons are quite fearful of getting on Shadow's bad side. The next time the Returners will encounter Shadow, he ends up being much more amicable. Sabin Figaro is separated from the others after an encounter with Ultros, a giant purple opt octopus monster they fight while escaping from the Empire. Sabin washes up near the kingdom of Doma, and Shadow agrees to act as a guide to get Sabin past the Imperial blockades. It's at this time that Sabin and Shadow oversee Kefka, initiating a plot to wipe out the entire kingdom of Doma through the use of poison. After attacking Kefka, who has poisoned the water supply to Doma, Kefka escapes, sacrificing his own troops in the process. Sabin and Shadow will join up with Cyan, one of the last survivors of the Doma Massacre. They eventually flee the Imperial camp and escape to a forest nearby, where they accidentally board the Phantom Train, a supernatural train that appears in order to bring the recently deceased to the afterlife. After escaping, uh, which, in which they had to fight the train for their freedom, in which Sabin executes a great suplex move on the train itself, Shadow parts ways with the others at Baron Falls. The next time the Returners will encounter Shadow is at the pub in Kolingen, while they're on their long trip to the town of Zozo in search of Terra, whose Esper powers have now awakened. Shadow offers his help as a hired gun for 3,000 gold and inevitably parts ways later on when Terra is found. Later on, Shadow is hired by the Empire to accompany General Leo, Celeste, Locke, and Terra to help track down the rogue espers that attack the Imperial capital of Vector. 
During one of the nights on the ship traveling to Thamasa, Shadow eavesdrops on a conversation between General Leo and Tara. In this conversation, Tara reveals her frustrations over her inability to feel love, most likely due to her harsh upbringing by the Empire, who raised her to simply be a weapon and nothing more. He reveals himself to Tara after General Leo leaves and rebuts Tara's advances and leaves her with the advice that she needs to find her own answers and that some people have chosen to kill their own emotions, alluding to his mysterious and possibly tortured past. Upon reaching Thamasa, the group asks for help from the village elder Strago, who, and this is where the party first encounters Realm, Strago's adopted granddaughter. Unlike everyone else, Interceptor takes an immediate liking to Realm, and while working out the details with Strago, they go off and play together. This doesn't escape Shadow's notice, and it's obvious that there is more than this that meets the eye, as Shadow seems uncomfortable and disturbed. The group stays the night in Thamasa, and sometime in the late hours of the night, Strago wakes the party, pleading for their help to save Realm from a burning building in the town. Shadow stays in bed, unresponsive, much to Locke's ire, and simply ignores them and lets them save Realm on their own. But... After they're gone, he turns and notices that Interceptor is missing. In the burning house, Strago, Terra, and Locke find Realm unconscious with Interceptor protecting her from living flames. The group manages to help fend off the living flames, but the accumulation of smoke in the collapsing house render them unconscious as well. Shadow drops through the ceiling at the last minute, using a smoke bomb to get everyone out of the house safely before they succumb to the smoke and flame. The following day, Strago thanks Shadow for his part in saving them, but Shadow responds that he was only there to save his dog, Interceptor. This furthers the rift between Shadow and the other members of the party, and he then decides to search for the espers himself and parts ways. Interceptor hesitates to leave Realm's side, even as he is called by his master Shadow. After the floating continent is raised to the skies, Emperor Gestal and Kefka have no more use for Shadow and attempt to kill him, and they nearly succeed in the process. When the Returners find him discarded on the floating continent, they convince Shadow to fight alongside them, which he does, but after defeating the Atma weapon guarding the Warring Triad, Shadow again leaves the party, feeling ashamed this time of the role he played helping the Empire to raise the floating continent and bringing the world to the brink of destruction. Shadow has a heroic change of mind after Kefka murders Emperor Gestal and renders the Returners helpless as he begins shifting the Triad statues to reshape the world into his own twisted vision. He holds back the final Triad statue from being shifted by Kefka while the Returners make their escape. They wait for Shadow and he arrives just moments before the continent is torn apart. Unfortunately, it is a little too late, as the airship itself is ripped in half, crashing towards the surface of a world being cast into ruin. In the years following the destruction of the planet, Shadow travels the world with Interceptor at his side seeking out the legendary blade known as the Striker, while frequently the Colosseum regularly. Based on a tip he receives there, Shadow travels to a cave in the Velt, but is seriously injured. During Celeste's pilgrimage to reunite the Returners and stop Kefka once and for all, they come across the Velt Cave, and Interceptor leads them to a gravely wounded Shadow, about to be devoured by the Behemoth King. Upon defeating the formidable foe, they take Shadow via airship to Thamasa to recover. Shadow agrees to join them eventually so that he can put his skills to the ultimate test. But, while recovering in Thamasa, Shadow begins to have disturbing dreams, revealing some of his hidden past. These take place ten years prior to him taking the name of Shadow, when he went by the name of Clyde. It is unknown whether Clyde is his real name, first or last, 
or just an alias he's made up for himself. Alongside him is his partner, Barum, and they rob trains together. After a job that landed them over a million gold, Barum decides to give them the moniker, the Shadow Bandits. Eventually, the authorities catch up with them, and Barum is badly injured. Barum, afraid of being caught, pleads with Clyde to take his life. Clyde is conflicted and unable to go through with the act of and flees, leaving Barum to an unknown fate. Clyde ends up in Thamasa, where he marries a woman and fathers a child. His happiness doesn't last very long, as he knows his criminal past will eventually catch up with him, as well as crippling emotional issues due to him abandoning Barum when he needed him the most. He leaves his wife and daughter, taking with him only his trusted dog, Interceptor from his past. Given a lot of differences between uh, version translations, this may be the pocket watch that Ultimania refers to as the memento ring can only be used in game by Shadow and Realm and is found in Thamasa. Realm being Shadow's daughter also explains why Interceptor takes such a liking to Realm as he knows that she was kin to Shadow. This is as far as the game itself takes this mystery, but confirmation of Shadow's relationship to Realm is confirmed explicitly by the producers of the game. Finally, after defeating Kefka, as the Returners escape from the crumbling tower, Shadow parts ways with the rest, even ordering Interceptor away. He calls out to Baram to come and find him. We never see him leave the tower, and he presumably dies in its collapse, finally at peace, as he was able to come to terms with abandoning Clyde to a dark fate. Shadow's arc is about coming to terms with sins of the past, but given his aloof nature, becomes relegated to an optional minor character content. Despite that, Shadow's story is a gripping tragedy where a man has buried all of his emotion to spare his family the tragedy that he endured, but in doing so, has hurt them in the process. As he watches the Returners escape the collapsing tower, he can rest easy, knowing that the world will recover, and his daughter Realm will finally have a better life that he could have ever provided as a fugitive from the law, hiding not only from them, but his own perceived failings. Thanks for watching, I'm Retro Gaming Knight, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for sticking through these videos. This is a uh, little bit of a passion project of mine. This is going to be a series of in-game lore videos, uh, starting with Final Fantasy VI, which is the very first RPG I ever played and my absolute favorite game. So I have a lot of passion for this series. And I didn't see a whole lot of creators out there making videos like this. You see lots of review videos. You see a lot of uh, playthrough videos. Uh, but you don't see a lot of people talking about the, the lore and the characters inside the game itself. And I wanted to fill that niche as I was inspired by the game, by a lot of the videos from uh, creators doing lore videos for uh, tabletop wargaming, like Warhammer 40K, Battletech, and, and many others. Um, and these videos are a work in progress. This was the actual first video that I recorded, uh, which is why the dialogue seems a little stiff. Uh, but these do take a long time to make. And as such, these are going to be a monthly video series and not a weekly one like the video reviews that I've been doing uh, recently as well. And those video, those video game reviews will continue uh, in between these lore videos since they're a lot lower effort to put together. I don't have to comb through 50 hours of footage to find, you know, the right clips for certain characters or events. Uh, but this series will continue. I can already see ways to make the scripts more dynamic and better. I'm looking at the finished product and, you know, this, again, it's a work in progress. Uh, the next ones will be even better than, than the first ones. And as a preview for what's to come, the next lore video coming out in about a month from now will be all of the kingdoms 
from the world of balance. You'll I'll talk about their history, uh, their political relations to all the other uh, kingdoms, as well as the potential futures of these kingdoms for the ones that survive, as uh, not all of the kingdoms and societies in this world uh, have a happy ending, ultimately. So thanks a lot for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and the next lore videos for hopefully a long time to come.